We want to study some this morning in the book of Hebrews, in the uh, first chapter. <clears throat> I just noticed as I was studying this, uh, the book of Hebrews, of course we'd all, we had all from time to time discussed uh, the writing of the book. And uh, we all thought that, well, I mean, we all still spiled. I thought that Paul wrote it. And, uh, of course, I hadn't got any way of proving this, but I noticed in the, in the bottom of my, at the end of the chapter there, it says, written to the Hebrews from Italy by Timothy. So then, at the, at the first of it, in chapter 1, it says that this, the epistle of Paul to the apostles. And so, evidently, they didn't know the word. But anyway, I feel like it was Paul. Anyway, so this morning in chapter 1 of the book of Hebrews, God who at, uh, with verse 1, God who at sundry times and divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now he's saying here in sundry or different times or uh, separate times. And then he says, in different divers manners or different ways. So we know this morning that uh, who, the writer here is, is speaking to uh, us, that even uh, as we study a little bit closer uh, to this, he, uh, he's uh, letting us know also that we will we receive the message by the Lord Jesus Christ. But here he's saying the prophets in, in time past, and in verse 2 it says, has them two us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also the, he made the word who being the brightness of his glory and the excess image express or express image of his person and up, upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high so we see here that the writer here is covering the whole thing from the time of the old prophets until the time of Jesus and his ascension and that he had uh, uh, sat down on the right hand of the Father. So this morning as we look at these things we want to bring out a few things here in, in, uh, in verse 1. God who at sun, sun, died, sun dried times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now, if you wanted to go over to chapter 11 with me just a minute, we want to look at just a few things by faith. Uh, it says that he spake to them in, in Hebrews 11. Notice here, and he gives the definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we this morning uh, should identify uh, our faith by what we see, uh, not what we see, but the, how the, the, the hope that we, it has, because it says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. So a lot of times when we pray to the Lord and we have our prayers answered, uh, we don't see those actual things, but we know that they're coming about and we have this blessed hope within us this morning when we ask God for a uh, prayer to be answered, why well, we know that He is listening because uh, what we sh boy, we should uh, uh, ask this prayer is through the Lord Jesus Christ, and He is the one that will uh, submit it to the Father, and and He the Father can't deny Him because He is the Blessed Son, and He is the one that kept the law. He is the one that lived the perfect life, and so He said, "By faith, the substance of things hoped for." The evidence of things not seen. And notice as we look down through here, he gives several of the characters and even a, uh, uh, the faith that he's talking about. And uh, if you studied Noah very long, while well, you'd think, well, uh, hey, he had a pretty rough time of it. But his faith held true and he, he hammered and saw and banged and knocked on her, that old wood for a hundred years. But listen, it come true. The faith that he had in the Lord Jesus Christ, the faith that he that, that God said, I'm going to destroy the world, Noah. And we see Abraham. Abraham, if he uh, come out of Ur there, and uh, as uh, God said, hey, I'm going to give you all this, uh, Abraham. And uh, it's, just, it's the same way with us this morning. We need to we need to be more uh, more in tune with the Lord, that our faith will be a lot stronger than it is because 
He will answer our prayers, and He does answer our prayers, and He will continue to answer our prayers. And, and we wanted to, you know, uh, uh, there's so many in this 11th chapter. Enoch was one of them that I just noticed here that was that was so close to the Lord that he didn't have to have to go through the, the process of dying. He was changed. He was he was brought out. Uh, he was carried up. So uh, I just want to bring these out to you because uh, here is back uh, in our in uh, chapter one. He's talking about the older the older apostles or the older uh, fathers and the prophets and how that they uh, seen the Lord and how they seen the miracles that He did and 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 how that all was uh, uh, taking place there. And notice, but in here. As he, uh, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ came and fulfilled the law, and the law was uh, completed. And a lot of people say the law was done away with. No, the law was not done away with, but the law was completed. And so we see then that Jesus Christ came on the scene, and he says here in verse 2 Hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son. And he's speaking to us this morning through his word, by his Son, and through the Holy Spirit. And this morning when, when we uh, are sitting here listening and something occurs to us, it's not because this old flesh just figured that out. It's the Holy Spirit talking to us and, and guiding us and telling us, hey, this is what it's all about. And listen, this morning uh, he says uh, uh, that Jesus Christ was appointed an heir and that Jesus Christ is our uh, go-between between us and the Father. And he says, Now whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. And now notice here, I want you to notice this word in, in verse 2. He says, He hath in these last days spoken. When then he goes on down here and he says, By whom also he made the world. So he spoke the world into existence. And Jesus Christ is speaking to us this morning the same word that created the world and how how important it was to and what a miracle it was to create all of the the earth, the the animals and, and all of this. And now we're seeing here that Jesus is speaking the word to us. And it's, it's far greater important to us than the word that, that spoke the world into existence. And the word is true. And if we, if, we, if we will just only believe it. And if we will only uh, uh, let the Holy Spirit talk to our hearts and speak to our souls. We can live a whole lot closer to the Lord and what we do. Now here he said in, in this uh, Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, talking about Jesus, and the express image of his person. And this, uh, 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 this word express, I, I looked, or looked it up, it says it's uh, to make known or to reveal or symbolize. And, and here he's saying, to whom being the brightness of his glory and the express image of the, his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins. So he's saying Jesus uh, kept the law, kept the word, and now he has purged us from our sins. And we, this morning, uh, we should pay close attention to this word purged because, you know, uh, Adam spoke, spoke some Wednesday night on stirring. And uh, we, we, we thought on this word of, about stirring. And listen, we all need to be stirred. We're all like uh, uh, settlings. Uh, we, we settle in sometimes and we get uh, happy on the seat of do nothing. And we need stirring. We need to keep to be stirred up and to make our hearts happy and make our souls glad that we can that we can do something but if we step too long we settle on the bottom so we need to be stirred here he's saying that Jesus purged us and we know this morning on the uh, some, some of us have been purged uh, before we had to go to the doctor and we know what that is and, and listen it's the same way here this word purge means to clean out it means to clean us up and this is what he's saying here this morning 
with this here when he had by himself purged our sins uh, he he went to the cross and he died for our sins he took away all of our sins because listen he died for our sins all of our sins was upon the Lord Jesus Christ and when G and when when Jesus cried my father why has thou forsaken me it was this reason because that that God could not look upon sin and so all of those sins was up on him and here he, he has purged our sins uh, and he has he has cleansed us took all of those sins upon him took it to the cross and paid the price he, he was a supreme sacrifice and so he purged our sins then he sat down on the right hand of the Father of the Majesty, and there he, there he is today. And listen, in special occasions, you read this as Stephen, for one, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ stood. And it's a great honor this morning for us to even think about one that was great enough that the Lord Jesus Christ would get up and stand uh, for a martyr like Stephen. But anyway, the, the thing is, there he is sitting at the right hand of the Father this morning, making intercessions for our sins. And when we when we sin, and when we come to Him and confess that sin, He is just and able to forgive us or to take it to the Father and, and present this to the Father, and your sins are forgiven. Because, like I said a while ago, the Father will not deny His Son, Jesus Christ. So here, being in verse 4, being made so much better, talking about Jesus Christ, than the angels, as he hath, hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. This is, and Jesus, uh, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And listen, he, you don't find this in the Bible or that he is well pleased or uh, he doesn't say it with the angels. In fact, in the business, one of the angels that we know of by the name of Lucifer, uh, did right opposite of what he was supposed to do. But we see here that God recognized his son as his well-beloved son. So here he says, being made much better than the angels, as, the, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. And then verse 5, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. So uh, we won't read just a little bit, if, if, if we can get over to it in Psalms. I want you to read, read just a little bit. Well, Psalms 2, if, you get, if you're going there. I'll find it in a minute. Jesus, you are my son. You ask of me. 
and I will give. And that's, that is the assurance this morning, people, when you, when you humble your hearts before the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask Him these things, listen, He has that. And He takes it to the Father. And, and, and listen, the Father cannot deny Him. And so you are assured this morning when you pray a prayer, it might not be in God's will for it to take place at that time, but God knows about it. God hears it. And if, if it's in God's will, if He sees, sometimes we pray prayers that is not good for us. Sometimes we ask the Lord for things that we don't know what we're doing about. But the thing of it is, we need to ask, and He is happy when we ask, but sometimes a little child will ask for something for his, from his father or his mother. And listen, the mother or the father knows that it's not good for that child. And they'll, they'll smile and they'll say, okay. But the thing of this, they know what that child needs. And God knows what we need this morning. And, and, and so when, when we're praying and when we, when we say, well, God, you, did, you, just, you just didn't, you didn't hear me. Yes, he heard you. Well, you didn't answer me. Well, God answers in his own time. And so this morning, if there's anybody here, uh, and I don't know, I, you know, it, it just, it, the Lord's leading in this. But <clears throat> if you're discouraged, if you're downhearted because you feel like that the Lord's turned his back on you, listen, he don't do that. He don't do that to a child. And uh, a, a, a mother and a father don't turn their back on a child, even though they be they're, uh, they're sometimes they're disobedient and all this. They, that love is still there, and and you need to you need to understand this morning when you you got a father that loves you, and you got a brother uh, that loves you, and they uh, he Jesus showed it by giving his life, and God showed it because he gave his son to die for you. And so they love you, and uh, you're you're their child. And so this is this is why I wanted to read that psalm sir, to you this morning about uh, in the in the psalm. So he says here in verse six, and listen, and back in our lesson. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said. And let all the angels of God worship him. And we remember, you remember even at the birth of Jesus Christ there, how that the angels uh, was, was glorifying the Lord. And so uh, he says, in verse 7, And of the angels, he says, Who maketh his, his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? And, and of the angels, he said, Who maketh his angel spirits? And who... And his ministers a flame of fire. That is that is what that is the, the he's talking to the angels about the the, uh, the flame of fire. But in verse eight, but unto the son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sepulchre of righteousness is the sepulchre of Thy kingdom. Thou thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Thou, thou for God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy foes. And so again, we see how how that how that Jesus how that Jesus is is set above all, and how that how that Jesus is our our Savior, our go between, and the one that we pray to. And then he says, uh, and verse ten, Thou, O Lord. Thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they sh all shall wax old, and doth a garment, and, a, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool? Or are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And so we we'll see the place of the angel, they're ministering angels. And uh, you know, they're they're there and they're and they're it's real, they're real. You know, a lot of people don't believe in angels. I know there was uh, 
uh, uh, the Sadducees didn't believe in angels, but the thing of it is, they're real. But I want to tell you something else too. The devil has his imps too, and you know it, and you, we know that also. But we can depend on the angels to minister to us and to help us in times of need. And so, listen, I'm I'm I'm, I'm through with the lesson this morning. I hope that I hope that what I have uh, tried to do and to say to you is has been a blessing to you. Uh, uh, I know that. I know that uh, God is on the throne, and the Lord Jesus Christ is our is our minister to to God. So at this time, we're going to go to the Lord of prayer and be dismissed. Our Father, this morning we come to you, Lord, thanking you for another opportunity to read Thy Word and make a few comments, Lord. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins and that you would help us through the remainder of the day, and that you would bless in the services, Lord. Uh, we thank you for. Mm -hmm.